Youth Support's International Conference and World Youth Forum drew experts from all over the world speaking on a number of subjects and breaking new ground in research in adolescence. Youth came and spoke about their experiences. We had art and drama workshops where they could work together even though they didn't speak each other's language. What I want you to bear in mind is that while they do their acting, singing, dancing, they never learnt any of this before they came, so they've done absolutely marvellously, I think. I'd like to first start off, though, with Lance, who is going to just tell you a little bit about how he works creatively with youth and the carvings and things that he does. My full name is Lancelot Brian, and you can call me Lance if you want to ask me any question later on. And I am a wood carver. Some of these carvings that you see on display here were done by me. This piece is my first piece. First piece of carving that I've done in my life. And actually, if you look at, if you look at this piece, it's a far improvement. <laughs> and believe me, I must tell you a little bit about myself before I start telling you about the carving. When I used to go to school as a young man, I never good at academic. Reading and our maths and all that, I really bad at it and I used to wonder what is going to happen to me in life when I grow up. Most of my mates was good at academic and I was really bad at it. But I used to be good at art. I could draw properly. When I left school, I started to do a little bit of carving. And then I never really knew that I could really um, become um, like my profession. Later on now, I entered into an exhibition. In 1981, I didn't get any award. 1982, I re-entered the exhibition. I got two awards, a bronze medal and also a silver medal. And I won a scholarship to go to the Jamaica School of Art. And that's where I learned how to do the, the anatomy about the human body and learn how to illustrate about art and teach somebody. Because when you are self-taught, you don't know how to illustrate it or explain it. And believe me, when I left the art school, the first thing I did, I started to teach my mates them around me where I live. And I started to get young boys them off the street, teach them to carve, show them how you can make a proper living. And at the moment now I run a project called the Mighty Gully Youth Project in Old Harbor in Jamaica. <laughs> These on the floor, but this one, I like this one more than all, believe me. Uh -huh. One of the Italian students did this and I properly like it, look like an African mass. Mm -hmm. If I did young again to grow, the first thing I would do, I would properly educate myself right and if i can't educate myself i will try and get a skill skill or education i knew that that is power we kept it very free and flexible we wanted to be there to underpin the work done from underneath we didn't want to top down what people were doing and we wanted to go in a process sort of model with with um, young people and to enable them and to give them strategies for success and ways forward. She said, turning around, but just as she turned, like she was too close to the edge, her heel slipped, and she went over the edge. I'm bad character, the mechanical living care, who will check us in? A pretty face and bad character. The mechanical living care, who will check your face pretty, your face is pretty, but the character dirty. Kill it as a act to flirty, flirty, you're with the dumpty. And also, hurry, I'm gonna find a mistake at that boat. Sorry, sorry. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do a drama piece, and you'll be participating in the end of it. Okay. The um, it's entitled Life Dare. What in a dare for me? Life Dare! What in a dare for me? Life Dare! What in a dare for me? Look for me here, all them black and dirty. Life Dare! What in a dare for me? Life Dare! Life Dare! Look for me shoes, a child won't make it. Life Dare! But in a day for me, life day, life day, life day. Come on, girl, it's okay. She said, walking towards her. Oh, Tenny, she said, turning around. But just as she turned, she was too close to the edge. Her heel slipped, and she went over the edge. Suicide, suicide. Why are you riding people's mind? You are a silent killer. 
even allow people to die while sleeping on their pillow. Suicide is suicide. You are pathetic. Even allow people to take their lives with a matic. Suicide is suicide. You allow my brother, my sister, to die in a tragic. What's the secret? Are you a magic? Why can't you judge it? And allow people to stop thinking about it, about it, about it. You better stop it. Alright, check it out. Yo, yo. I'm living in dystopia, myopia, resides over the eyes of my family. The surname is humanity. We've been shook. Scream that the alarm has beat. Yeah, we continue to sleep. We continue to sleep. So it's time for some change to rearrange the process to change the fact the shadow has been cast upon the oppressed and the lawless. We've been raping the village to earth, our village of birth. Understand that there's villains at work as the beat rise and I continue to flow. The crimson tide boils and grows, the machine rocks and it rolls. The child mind gets enriched, sees planted. The harvest is rich, writes the man, and now the politics switch. Demonstrations of the power of voice, reminiscences of an hour of choice, a time and place where time and space come screeching. So listen up, because the youth are speaking. What? Yo. From the streets of Jamaica with special delivery. I'm Trey Garden and this is not trickery. Listen to this now. Let me know. Let me know. Yo. But the killer giving the originality, uh huh. Suicide, I'm tempting, you're not good for you, uh huh. You must stop it. People must stop it. Live life when they have it. You know, you know. A pretty face and bad character. Them they cannot live in care, watch a car. A pretty face and bad character. Them they cannot live in care, watch a car. Your face pretty, your face is pretty, but your character dirty. Tell her that I act too pretty, pretty. You want to talk to and all so hurry. I want to find a mistake, you talk about the story. Sorry. Today's discussion will be sexuality and the Jamaican woman. Um, we have in our midst Dr. I mean, a psychi psychologist, Dr. Alicia Walker, um, a teacher, Tanisha McFarlane, and her daughter, Shaquille. We just go straight into our questions. Um, our first question will be um, What does sexuality mean to you, and are you aware of your sexuality? I mean, we could start with. Good evening, good evening everybody. Um, I'm Dr. Walker, psychologist. Yes. Um, <laughs> sexuality to me, sexuality to me is like everything. It's so important that a woman knows who she is 
and the power that her body has and her mind has. Personally for me, my sexuality is my mind, my soul, my body, the way it moves, the way I talk, the way I look, the way I smile. It's in my eyes, it's in every word that, every, that I utter. It's my intelligence, it's my love that I have to share with the world. It's me. Good evening, everybody. My sexuality is my state of mind, how I think about it, and how, I'm, how I feel around the persons that I'm with, and how I am. That's basically my sexuality, and how it's based. Good evening, everybody. My sexuality is, it's based on my body and everything that I do, but it's deep down inside. It's everything within me. It's all that I do and with everybody around me and everything. But yet still, she's not ready for sex. <laughs> <laughs> um, sex in Jamaica is like a taboo um, topic. People don't really talk about it a lot. Um, how was sex viewed back then? I mean, sex was, as I said before, a taboo topic, but um, I mean, then it was more enclosed. I mean, now we have the media and everything. Do you think anything has changed since then? <laughs> and sex sexuality today has changed a whole lot because back then people were scared to talk about it. They make it seem like it was something that you weren't supposed to talk about, but now it's like everywhere. It's like everywhere you look, there is happening. So now people are more aware about it and people are open and willing to talk about it in today's world. In today's Jamaica, I mean, Jamaican society usually has that you can talk about certain topics with your parents, but today we've come a far way. I mean, parent, children can talk to their parents who have sex education in schools and we talk to each other, we relate to each other and we see where we can have, we can laugh about sex, we can talk mm -hmm. about it and we can understand that we're not ready for sex as young people. Well, not me as a young person because I'm not my young time gone, but um, <laughs> Shakira, 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 Shakira is young and beautiful and it, it is the Jamaican's mother, mother's per, um, responsibility to ensure that her child knows all she needs to know about sex so that she doesn't go to her peers and, and, and be educated by them. We have the media who has taken over. We have them really imposing beliefs from other cultures on us and it is very important that our traditions stay true. We stay true to our traditions and ensure that our generation, our upcoming generation, knows what the West Indian woman expect, is ex what is expected of the West Indian woman as far as sexuality is concerned. Um, on a final note, um, what, um, when do you think is the right age for people to start, for teenagers to start indulging in sexual activity? <laughs> well, <laughs> basically, it, it, it depends on your feelings. Sometimes I feel, sometimes I feel like having sex. But when I think again about what is going to happen and the things that, you know, can come, when you think like pregnancy, AIDS and STS and those stuff, and basically my mother. <laughs> <laughs> you need to look back. It's having sex is a big responsibility and you need to can manage your responsibility. To have sex is like it, it keep your back. Teenage, I don't think teenagers should have sex. That's why I don't have sex. <laughs> any question from the audience? Is there any question from the audience? Jamaican 
grandmothers were teenage, I was a teenage mother myself. And we learn to appreciate our children and love our children. It might take us a while to get around, but in the end, we're always there for them. And if you come and come home and say you get pregnant, you probably get beat first and then afterwards. <laughs> 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 so, uh, I want to ask Shakira if she's ever talked to her mother about her boyfriend. Now, having a boyfriend, or sex, that's how her mother reacts. <laughs> having sex or having a boyfriend but she's like I'm not ready you're not ready for this you need to finish school and things like that but you know that's you expect that from your mother because they wouldn't want you to have sex as a teenager I believe in my opinion why she shouldn't have sex because I don't think her state of mind is actually waiting for it because sex have its ups and downs Jamaican young girls are basically, they look physically ready for sex. They are mature physically and they look ready. But mentally, psychologically, they are not ready because, you know, females are basically on a different level from males. And we tend to, we meet the guy the first date, everything, oh God, we're married already and have children. But for the man, it's like just sex probably, not all the time, but, and so we take it a bit farther. And so when, it turns out not the way you expected it to turn out. It can cause a lot of trauma, which we don't want. Oh, sorry, well, we've got a dad here who wants to well, make a um, comment. <laughs> <laughs> nice that I could be on the show to see my daughter and my former wife. <laughs> but I don't think my daughter is ready for sex yet because she's still a little girl. She might not think that she's daddy's little girl, but I mean, she is. Um, these young ladies nowadays tend to, because their bodies are physically developed and all, they, they might not want to have sex, but because they are not psychologically ready, then they are brainwashed into having sex. They are tricked by guys who are not that smart, but have a little much influence on them, and they end up having sex. What I'd like to say to my daughter is, Please don't have sex yet. And if you do, use protection. Um, don't just protect yourself from pregnancy. But remember, um, there are STIs, especially AIDS. Come on, baby. I want to have you around forever. Anyways. And I hope, since I'm not at home, her mother is not allowing any guys to come in the house. <laughs> so we've got Abby, Kate, Layla, Tasha, Rebecca, Lucy, and Alistair! <laughs> this isn't actually about any old pieces, but I was talking to one of the experts the other day, who was a very clever man named Richard McKenzie. And um, he basically said, I'm just going to reiterate his words because they were very good. Um, he said, one of the reasons this is so important to do with young people is that you can tell young people information, but unless they have an emotion about it, they won't actually take it on and remember it and use it in their lives. So this is why I feel that Dr. Birch has chosen that we work this way with young people. So they've had a lot to think about, and I think what they've produced is fantastic. And we've try to help them as much as we possibly can, um, but mostly this has all come from them. We've just kind of helped them along, um, so, and I think they've done fantastically, um, and we're very proud. The Italians who at first were reluctant to get up and dance with me, but we've had a really good time doing it, and it was a really good way of um, interacting with each other since we don't really speak the same language, so it was a really sort of good, you know, formed kind of a bond between us, didn't it? Alistair? Yeah. Um, I've been helping the guys from LA and the guys from Italy do a couple of bits of music, one of which you've heard already. Um, and in the time they've had, I thought they've, they've done really, really well. And all the ideas have come from them. So uh, anything you hear is completely their own ideas. Oh my 
God, mate, he's pulled it out this time, I tell you that, mate. Good, good shit. <laughs> hey, niece, what's up, Tasha? Uh, Want some Jamaican rum? No. It's no, purple. No, no, no. I've got something better than that. I won't make it. Something better than Jamaican rum? <laughs> what about you, cuz? Yeah, What's yeah, up? Yeah. Come on, you have it. It's only 10. Got some. Anyway, mate. I know I said 60, but for I throw this in as well, yeah? Make it 70, yeah? Because that, what's that girl you're hanging around with? That Natasha girl? Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. She, oh, she can't handle it. Let's anyway, get 10 off her, yeah? <laughs> so, how was it? How oh, nice, man. So, Natasha, you still don't have makeup man yet? Leave me alone. What's up with you? Get away from me. Hey! Leave him alone! That? You leave him alone! You're the devil! I said leave him alone! No! no yeah, leave him alone! Anyway, I'll, shall I go sort out with her now? <laughs> What's that? Where is she? Wait, Natasha! Oh, you must be. No, 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 get away from me! You gave me that shit, man! Wait, why am I here? Get away from me! Leave me alone! Yeah, who are you? Who are you? Are you trying to sell my moose drugs? I'm gonna cross you. Who are you? Yo, get out of my turn, man! When you had the world against you, I took you in. When you lost your job, I gave you the best paycheck. When everyone lied to you, I told you the truth. Take one more hit, cause I'll take all your pain away. One more hit, and everything is suffering, all blown away. Don't ask who I am, cause I'm your greatest fantasy. I make all your dreams come true. I'm yours and only yours. I'll only be loyal to you. Just take one more hit, and you'll never see my face again. But remember, when you light up that pipe, and you take me in, always remember, I love you. And you're next to kin. Okay, um, this poem is a Creole poem. And I want everybody to participate, everybody in the audience, and along with my fellow delegates. One, <laughs> 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 two, one, two. Mr. Abu Chikabu! 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 Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Uh huh! Uh huh! Real stush! Real stush! I said a boom, chicka boom! 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 I said a boom, chicka the rocker, chicka the rocker, chicka the boom! I said a boom, chicka the rocker, chicka the rocker, chicka the boom! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Uh huh! Uh huh! Really hardy! Perhaps you would also have a final thought. As to what we need is um, an emotion that you want to get rid of or a nasty feeling that you want to get rid of because we want you all to leave this complex feeling great. Okay. <laughs> How do you feel now? You think you can be a little bit more positive, get away from the thinking and go back into the doing? Yeah? Okay. Yeah, anyway, yeah. So let's have a little go at perhaps opening the mind here. <laughs> Yes, please, and pass the squeeze along. 
and I think that's the way to go because if we're going to do any work with adolescents we don't want to really be sitting job, uh, counting up all the statistics and seeing you know how many have done this and how many have done that we want to look at the individuals and see why they've done what they've done why is what's happened to them has happened to them and what we can do to help them and the important thing is that things change society changes the stresses on young people changes and um, what we need to do to help changes so it's not good sitting behind the desk and hoping that we're going to do something Thank you.